hao and hello everyone. So let's talk about the user interface. I know it's a hot topic for Harry Potter Magic Awakened, but still. A quick note right at the beginning, this video will have two parts. So if you just want to see what the user interface actually looks like, skip to wherever it ends up being. Uh, but for those who have the time and have not found yet anything more interesting to watch, stick around. Now, before we jump to conclusions and start attacking the game, let's rewind a little bit and remind ourselves that this game was initially developed and released in China, more precisely on September 9, 2021. And a lesser known fact is that I've actually lived in China, I've worked in China, which has led to many interesting experiences. But if we really want to stick to the point of this video, while I was there, I came across not only many cultural differences, like how casual it is to ride a cab with complete strangers because they just happen to be going in the same direction, but also differences in perception. To give you a better sense of what I mean, I worked for a film festival and film festivals need a lot of things, including a website. Now, the website was developed locally by local web designers, but it was intended for a Western audience. And you would think that simply making everything in English would cut it, but it did not. Those who have accidentally clicked on a Chinese website or seen Chinese banners and billboards at stadiums or anything of that sort will know what I mean. The designs to our eyes seem messy and confusing, but are they really? Because it's not like they are bad graphic designers. It's just that they are catering to a different audience. But hey, don't take my word for it. There's actual research conducted in visual attention and perception differences between Asian and Western cultures. And in many points, the Asians actually score higher. So we are the dumb ones. There's a reason why fifth of the world's population doesn't see anything wrong with these designs. Now, is this information gonna help you understand the user interface in Magic Awaken any better? No, but it does give you a new perspective. Trust me, I've been in that position where you're surrounded by things that are foreign and strange and you just get so overwhelmed at one point that you start calling things stupid. And whilst it's a common response, it's not really a sustainable one. If you want to experience something new, you have to be open to learn. I mean, I'm scared of intense traffic, but I'm still getting a driver's license. If nothing else, think of it as learning how to multiply, because let's be honest, if the sum is anywhere up to 100, you're not actually calculating in your head, you've simply memorized the result. So take the goddamn time to learn the user interface. And now that we're all wise and enlightened, let's take a deeper look at what the user interface actually looks like in the game. So the background of the main menu interface may change depending on whether you just started the game or you're already in the game and doing things. When you first log in, you will find yourself at the door, but later on you will find yourself in other places, but the main functions will remain where they are. Right now we will start with the little owl that has the notification red uh, button thingy. Um, this is where most of the communication will be happening. I will not cover everything in depth right now. Uh, I don't know if, if this will happen when the global version comes out, but at least in the beta tests we get daily rewards. So once again, by the envelope you see a little red dot and that is where you open these like gifts every day. Communication is divided in different sections. You can communicate with people from all over the world, from your region, from your house, from your house team. At the beginning, it won't matter so much. You can communicate with your friends. You can see all of your friends. I'm not very friendly, apparently. I have one. And here's a rundown of a lot of the places that you can go to in the game, but I would not touch this. This is not the best way. Stick with these envelopes, stick with this 
inbox. You can also just click claim all at the bottom if you haven't opened a few uh, over some time, some days. Uh, this is a function that appears in many sections of the interface. You can just claim all of the rewards at once. You don't have to go through everything and check if you've actually claimed everything. I'm not exactly sure what this is. As a function, you can write a letter. There's a lot of uh, in-game communication. You can post pictures, share pictures, share messages, but I would don't, don't touch it if you don't actually intend to communicate. Let's stick to the bottom line though. Uh, the first one is this knapsack. Hogwarts mystery players will know this as the moak skin. Uh, this features some of the options you have. Once again, a lot of communication. You can live stream on Twitch and YouTube. You have an in-game camera. That's a feature that is really, really nice, actually. I take a lot of my kind of screenshots of the game using this because it just sets it up all nicely. Hogwarts Mystery has the same function as well. So you can immediately share it to social media as well as in-game community. Uh, we've got achievements, but that has not unlocked yet, and potions, also not unlocked yet, but I'll get to that later and post a video about how potions are made. So we've got the knapsack, and then we've got our spell book, the little book next to it. This is where your deck is, this is where you can check all your cards. I will cover this in a separate video most likely because it's a whole other topic, but just to know that the little book at the bottom left middle is your spell book. And then finally, at the very corner, you've got your collection very nicely presented, I may add. At the bottom you can see also the little house collection. I haven't unlocked that yet, but that's basically a walk-in closet of everything. You got different skins for your wand that you can obtain. And the nice thing, uh, an upgrade from the previous beta test is that you can actually click on them even if they're locked and it will show where you can get them. This, this is something that I hated in the previous beta test that I could see all the stuff that I can presumably get, but I could never figure out when. <laughs> Here you can see how I search for my thumbnails, just taking pictures. Um, that's off topic, but you know, it looks nice, doesn't it? It's actually really, really pretty. But yeah, you can click on anything here and it will show where you can get this. Some will lead straight to the place, some will tell you you have to wait. So that's actually really, really handy and I like this. So we've got the bottom line. Now we'll move to the upper right corner. We'll start from the bottom with the little key. This is where I would suggest that you start your gameplay. So 25 tasks that you do when you first start your journey in this game and it will help you unlock all the features, all the locations and kind of get learn your way around the game. So I would really suggest that you focus on this because it will it will get you started and do a lot of the explaining for you. So that's that. Then we move up to the owl. This is, well, kind of a shop. You can get this particular package that involves the outfit and accessories. We've got the first year starter pack. I, I actually purchased one of these. Uh, you can buy them with in-game currency, so you don't actually have to spend money. Um, daily deals is worth checking out because there's always a free reward. It's not big, but if you do it every day, of course it piles up. And best sellers, also some interesting outfits. I really, really like visually how this game looks and the outfits are also this. They fit so well and they're so, they're interesting and yeah, I, I like it. I'm sorry to those who hate this game or find it confusing. Yes, it is tricky. It is a bit complicated and hard to navigate sometimes, but once you get the hang of it, mwah. Now, second icon from the top, this is where the events are found. I'm not gonna get too into them. They all have quite long deadlines. You can read about them when you click on all of them. Admission season is technically also an event. 
uh, but yeah you want to do them you do them you don't want to do them you don't it's as simple as that it's just like any other game um a lot of the kind of feeling of being overwhelmed comes from the, the idea that we have to do everything we don't so as long as you keep it simple in your own head it will remain simple in the game uh first icon from the top right Magisis Principium. Essentially, for those who play Hogwarts Mystery, this is magical milestones. <laughs> you've got the standard pack, you've got the deluxe pack that you can purchase, and as you level up in the game, you unlock rewards. And you can also see the claim all button as well. Uh, here I've unlocked some cards. So they remove the house chests. I have a video about the uh, somewhere on my channel. Now it's levels and you need to earn points to level up. So that is the new system. It basically works the same way as chests. It's just, yeah, it's just a point system now. And this is where you find it at the very top right corner. And of course you've got the outfit as the kind of main reward, you know. And yeah, once again, you can also purchase this with these uh, Star stones, I think they were called. Okay, so we got the right side. Now we move on to the left. The little icon next to the big round map is fast travel. You can just click to whichever area you want to go to. You're already in the dormitory. This is Lucky Wheel. Uh, if you buy the little key to unlock the wheel, it's kind of gambling in a sense because you don't know what you're gonna earn. Now we're in Diagon Alley, that's another location that you can fast travel to, though it will be called Gutter Street. So we first went to the Mysterious Cart, you can actually see the cart as well, and now we're in Gutter Street, which is Diagon Alley. We already went to Dormitory as well, and now just so you see what everything looks like. So this is Castle Sky. Uh, a lot of the time when you finish an activity, you will actually end up here. But as you can see, you can see everything that's uh, kind of on the menu. You can see everything here. So don't get confused. You can easily get wherever you need to get as long as you, well, as long as you remember where to press. So we've got the Castle Skies. And just so we're thorough, we will also go to the library. This is one of the easiest ways to get to the library. Literally just click fast travel and go to library. This is where you will be exchanging your library slips for cards. Uh, you get library s slips in many different ways. One slip will give you five cards and they've also updated this a little bit. The last time you would be shown all five cards, even if you already had copies of them. Uh, now they only show the unique ones that you get and the rest uh, you'd show, you just see at the end. And there's always the option to click on tips at the top right corner to read more about the card and how it works. And here we can see all the other ones. Uh, if you have multiple copies of the same card, you can upgrade it. You can see, can upgrade to level two. That is one of the options. And also here at the bottom left, you see the share option, which means you can take a screenshot and either download or share the image. We're going to move away from the library though because that's not our priority right now. Instead, we're going to click on the map so that we've covered that as well. Yep, fast travel's done. Moving on, the map. You can click on any of the items that you see. Oh, it, icons, not items. What the hell am I talking? Uh, we've got the dueling club, story task. That's... We'll, we'll get to the story. House teams, don't touch them at first, you don't want to. Library, another way to get to the library. Today's class is in the middle. Every day you've got three classes or two classes and, a, and an activity like Quidditch. Uh, they change every day, so that's kind of cool. Uh, Forbidden Forest is a separate activity. Um, I already have a video on that. 
and we've got exploration tasks so this actually means dancing haven't made a separate video on that yet at the top right you've got Hogsmeade, Hogwarts, Diagon Alley and London but most of those are currently locked moving on to left side there's the little circle if you click on it you get the story task this is where they are you can also see all the locations but the tasks are next to first year you see under task first year there's a little little icon of a book with a red circle click on that if you click on that a book will open this took me a while to find because i knew that there has to be a storybook we've got first year second year and third year coming and yeah in the first beta test the storybook was very easy to find in the second version of the beta test not so much but i eventually found it it's at the middle right side and that is it for now this is the general concept if you want to find other features if you want to explore some of the features more thoroughly then you can do that but i would really really suggest not clicking on everything at first because you will get overwhelmed and you don't have to you don't have to start with everything start with the admission season it will gradually show you everything and do actually spend some time memorizing at least the basic stuff that you need to remember so where all your stuff is so the bottom of the menu where the map is so top left corner admission season task the little key and then just clicking on the map and clicking on the items to see where the dueling club is forbidden forest and classes and you'll be good to go so now i say thank you for watching and i'll see you probably tomorrow with another video or two who knows how many i will manage to make thank you and bye